I believe everybody is an artist. Because when you're born, you're a child, and you don't think about it, and you scribble with finger paints and everything, and you, and you take colors, and that's what I do now. It's, a, it's childlike. You see the, the little... But I don't care what anyone thinks, and that's the difference. If you're afraid of what other people think, you're never going to get anything done. You have to just really trust yourself. And, uh, and it also takes a lot of encouragement from someone else. Someone else has to give you the courage to go ahead and follow your dreams. Sunday morning in Calexico The night was long And there was song Now birds are singing And it's reverie Don't make a sound Just look around It's Sunday morning in Calexico Don't make a sound Just look around Just look around This is a song about growing up in Calexico in the 50s What it was like then, never to be seen again without So let me tell you a story that happened not too long ago. Down in the valley, not far from Mexico, I ran into Joe and Victor at a bar. On Route 111 in Calexico. And after a few brews and some old news, we started talking about the good old days. Cruising in the sea of love and sputniks flying up above Marching in the, in the cavalcade with the Eucario and Buffalo Cassidy Old dog Union High School marching back And on a horse, of course, our good pal Juan Batista de Anza. And it's all still there Our home on the rain So much we've shared So much has changed Alexico Long time ago Mexican we had a 50 cent haircut And a 2 cent taco To uh, oil, oil, uh, oil barrels, and in Haiti, mostly not necessarily just Haiti, but but they're uh, prominent in Haiti. You can buy they they cut up they cut them out into designs. There's some birds over here, but this one was two gray cats with the birds and the flowers. So I painted our cats on there, <laughs> socks and uh, flowers, but they don't appreciate anything. Now just to, these figures just start coming on their own. There's no planning of any of them. But you start seeing them as you move along, they start, they start cropping up. Oh, honey, it's time for Dayquil severely. Tell you about the time uh, he went into a church in San Francisco and he found me in there praying. No. <laughs> Ask him. It was like the biggest coincidence on the planet. He was coming down from St. Mary's. I was at the Academy of Art. He walked into this church, and I, and I looked up, and he was standing there. We, neither of us could believe it. <laughs> wow, what on earth were you praying about? I was trying to decide whether I should join a seminary or, uh, or uh, uh, flee to Mexico. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Things weren't going too well. Here we are at the Pet 
Legend River Museum in Yonkers. I've been coming here for over 50 years and never did I think I'd actually be hanging on the wall, sir. Here we are. Hi, it's Laura Vogels. I'm the chair of the curatorial department at the Hudson River Museum. And I want to welcome you to the Hudson River Museum to see this amazing exhibition, Librato Romero from the desert to the river. I was so happy to be able to work with Lee on this and feature paintings that not only show your beautiful city of Calexico, California, where he had his childhood and has such a strong sense of place, and then feature paintings of our own Hudson River that's right outside the museum. This is the view that we have from our campus. And here at the museum, we're often featuring landscapes and talking about the relationship between ourselves, our sense of place, the environment, and how art and nature and our own sense of self all work together. This building, this building here uh, opened in 1969, and I was sent here on assignment by the New York Times with John Kennedy, the art critic of, the, of those days. I mean, people come to museums for so many different reasons, to escape what's, you know, your everyday uh, life, particularly now during the time of COVID. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of different reasons why people come in, looking for be to see beautiful things, to be enlightened and so on. I always, uh, uh, I, that also includes myself, but more than anything else, I come here to learn. And I always try to find a painting that teaches me uh, things that I'm, uh, wouldn't have thought of otherwise. Or, it's just a great learning experience. It's a great uh, 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 treasure uh, to be able to come here. And uh, I want to talk uh, briefly about uh, a show I had at the Carmen Durazo Cultural Arts Center in Calexico. Uh, and uh, I showed uh, pictures, uh, 18 giant paintings like this size uh, all mostly focusing on Mount Signal and uh, growing up in the valley and things like that. And uh, some of the paintings are in here. This is this is now permanently at the Cultural Museum. And uh, you see this these uh, these lines that represent a win window frames. What happened was uh, in my studio in Yonkers. Uh, uh, it's a factory building. And it has these giant windows, 10-foot windows. And at night, the, uh, uh, the lights from the parking lot would cast shadows on the paintings. And I always would look at them and say, God, they look a lot better with the shadows than without them. So I started painting shadows, the, the shadows in the paintings. I did several of them, and this is one. And um, uh, all of these paintings are now in Calexico. They're at the library, one's in City Hall, uh, they are also in uh, San Diego State University's uh, Calexico campus in their library. They also have one. This one Carmen Durazo has uh, in her home. She was uh, so I left them all. They were all donated, and uh, I'm very happy that they're there. And uh, uh, a, a big subject for me for so many years was Mount Signal. I must have done hundreds of paintings. And this, here's Mount Signal in this painting. This is a neighborhood that I grew up in. This is a, such a surprise. I was visiting, I checked into a motel that didn't exist when we were kids. And uh, I looked out the window and there was our neighborhood. Victor lived over here, Cesar Sanchez. Merle lived just beyond this palm tree. Our house was where this tall, elongated telephone pole is. Herbie and Harold, uh, uh, lived here in this house, and this is Albert Nogales' backyard. So we used to play here when we were kids. And we would meet on Merle's porch and uh, plan our day of adventures, which a uh, uh, little band of hoodlums who were just uh, uh, passing the summers away. You know, uh, we weren't allowed to wear shoes because uh, we had to save our shoes for school. <laughs> And uh, this is probably the most recent, and it represents uh, traveling in my mind from Calexico and Imperial Valley across the country to the Hudson River. It's a fantasy, of course, but, uh, uh, but it's something I've had so much fun with. It's a technique I've been using, uh, 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 actually, uh, Wood, wood filler and uh, bathroom grout to create the textures. And I like the textures because being from the desert, you're surrounded with adobe walls and lots of uh, that kind of thing. 
uh, and uh, the figures uh, emerge. The, the, the way I paint, I don't have anything uh, planned when I get started, and these things emerge on their own. This this is actually a, a kind of a homage to Marino Marini. He's a, an Italian artist who I've always loved, uh, and um, um, one of his uh, great motifs was a horse and a single rider, and the rider always had his arms outstretched. There's many statues and paintings on that. But it also represents the story my father told me that when he was growing up, he was about seven years old, and his grandfather called him over. He was out in the field, there were cowboys in New Mexico. And he, said, he says to my father, Librado, that little foal that just uh, uh, was born uh, a few, uh, about a month ago, is ready for you to ride. I'm giving that to you. It's now gonna be your pony, it's your horse. Go over there, they're gonna put a saddle on it and, and you and you can, uh, you have a horse now. So he went over, they saddled it up, he rode it over to where his mother uh, was at home, their home and uh, nearby and, uh, and he said, uh, Mommy, look what Grandpa gave me. And, he's, and she says, did you thank your grandfather? So he rode out there and all the cowboys were kind of in a circle in the field and his grandfather was lying there and he had died. While he was giving the horse to my grandfather, my, uh, to my father, he was having a heart attack. And that was his last gift to my father. And uh, so years later, I'm back visiting uh, the old homestead. It's out in the middle of nowhere. And what happens was uh, my, my cousin, an older cousin, um, my father's age, was still living there. And he was showing us around. There's nothing now but adobe ruins and an old church that's falling apart. But he still lives there and he, he points in the field. He says, you see that rock over there? That's where your great grandfather died. And the whole story my father told me came alive to me. I could see where the corral was when my father had to run over where they saddled the horse, you know, about uh, four, 400 yards away. And then I could see where he had to ride to the house to tell his mother. And then he comes back out to thank his grandfather. And his grandfather had died on that spot that the, they had just shown me the you know, location. And it was, you know, it was kind of a, a, a lore of the, of the village. And it was a story that was probably told often. Uh, and then this is a variation of that idea. And then the lettering, there's a lot of lettering on that one up there and also. It, it represents it represents all the technology and texting and, and uh, um, that we do and uh, everyone's always messaging one another and so we're surrounded by invisible words and letters and sentences and and, and uh, notation and, stuff. and so that's I include all this uh, uh, really in this case however this is a song about going back to Calexico and uh, that I wrote uh, just for my own amusement. And uh, within the song it says, Calexico, long time ago, we used to love the Fox Picture Show. Then we cross over into old Mexico for a 50 cent haircut and a two cent taco. Paints a picture like a lullaby. It's kind of soothing and I don't know why. Gathering shadows on the desert floor. I think the prey, I think I know what for. The old sailboat is passing by. Alone, the beneath this clear blue sky. It's such a lovely day. Best of all, 